Hello, my name is Adam. In this videos, we will learn the basics of the Tapir library. Tapir is a library for rapidly developing and deploying self-documenting HTTP APIs. It's using the Scala programming language and functional programming. If you would like to see how this combination can bring you, the programmer, tangible benefits, this series is for you. As a start, we will develop a really simple Hello World application just so that you get to know the basic tools and the basics of the library. The first thing that you will need is a text editor. Here I'm using IntelliJ with the Scala plugin. You can also use VS Code with the Metals add-on or in fact virtually any text editor out there. Notepad will do as well. We are going to use Scala CLI. Scala CLI is great for smaller projects as it allows us to contain the dependency information and the source code of our program in a single file. So I've got Scala CLI installed over here. It's available via most package managers. Mine is installed via Brew. Um, we are also going to use uh, Java 21. Um, here I have OpenJDK, but you can use other distributions as well. Mm, Java 21 will be needed because we will be using virtual threads. Virtual threads allow us to use the, a familiar direct style synchronous programming model without sacrificing any of the performance. So if you would uh, have an older Java version and you would like to manage multiple Java versions on your local machine, just use SDK man. SDK man is a tool using which you can switch Java versions um, in different and have different versions in different uh, terminals. Okay, so we've got, uh, I think we've got the basics. Uh, we've got a text editor, we've got Scala CLI, and we've got Java. So now we can actually start developing our first Hello World Tapir API. We will need uh, two dependencies. Um, so uh, that's the way you can uh, add a dependency using Scala CLI. So that's a special directive uh, telling the tool to actually download the dependency from Maven Central. So uh, we are using the core module. The core module will allow us to describe the shape of the endpoints that we will want to later expose. And we also have a server implementation because we will want to expose the endpoint to the outside world. Let's start by defining an entry point of a program and then we will proceed to describing the endpoint. So let's create a main method called hello tapir. It will return a unit. And here we will start the endpoint description by first taking the empty description called an endpoint. Endpoint is part of the HTTP Tapir package, so we need to import uh, that value. We import everything, everything from that package. This will allow us to uh, use the Tapir's API freely to uh, describe the endpoints. Uh, as I said, endpoint. Uh, represents an empty endpoint description. We can now refine this description, adding more details as we go. So each endpoint has a number of inputs and outputs. Inputs are the values that are read from the HTTP request. Outputs are the values that are written to the HTTP response. So here we will add three inputs as a start. So we will say that the endpoint corresponds to the get method. So it's a constant input. It's a requirement that this endpoint will match the request if <clears throat> the request is a get request. We'll also say that it should only match hello slash world path. Um, and that's going to be the start. Hello endpoint. Okay. We actually don't need the braces in Scala 3. And what we can do now is we can print line the hello endpoint uh, description to the standard output. So let's open the uh, terminal. And what we can do now is we can do Scala CLI hello, that's Scala. And it's running and you can see that we have a human friendly description of our endpoint saying that this endpoint uh, corresponds to this method and this path and doesn't output anything yet. So now add, let's add some more details. So we will also say that we want to have another input and this time it won't be a constant input. It will be an input which will capture a value from, from the request. So we will use the query input. We want to uh, obtain a string from the query parameter called name. And we can run our code here again. 
and you can see that our description is now a bit richer. So this query method returns a description of a query parameter, which is then added to the description of the endpoint. So both the result of the query over here uh, and the result of each dot in method invocation returns us a data structure. So here the data structure describes a query parameter and this entire data structure represents an endpoint. Each time we call dot in dot get, uh, we create a new instance of the data structure with the additional detail added, right? We add some details corresponding to a method, we add some details corresponding to the path, we add some more detail that the endpoint should read something from the query. We can also say that as an output, we want to return a string body. So uh, once again, we can see what's the result over here. You can see that it produces a body, uh, a text plane uh, body. So now we have a data structure which describes our endpoint. The next thing that we need to do is to actually expose the endpoints to the outside world. But there's a crucial detail meet, missing, and that is the logic that should be run when our endpoint is invoked. So in order to add that logic, uh, to add that logic we need to combine the metadata of our endpoint, because so, what, what we have so far is only a description of the shape of the endpoint. Right? In other languages, this metadata is often expressed using annotations or constructs similar to that. Um, here we can use uh, our base language, Scala in our case, to define the metadata of the endpoint. So we need to couple it with the logic that should be run when the endpoint is invoked. Uh, this can be done using the handle uh, success method. Um, so we are using the success variant um, because we always want to return a 200 OK response. Um, there, there are also other variants which allow you to differentiate between returning a successful and an error response. Uh, but for our um, basic needs here, handle success will be just fine. So this method needs to take in the name. So this name is extracted from the query parameter and it needs to return the string body. So it will return hello name. Okay. So now um, we can run this code again. It should be uh, yeah, the same description, but now our hello endpoint value over here is no longer just endpoint metadata, right? It's endpoint metadata combined with the logic that should be run when this endpoint is invoked. So now it's, a, it's, so now it's uh, something that's called a server endpoint in Entapier. The last thing that we need to do is actually expose the endpoint to the outside world. So we will use the netty sync server. Once again, we need to import it. What we need to do is we need to import that value, of course. So we import the netty sync server. Now we can proceed to actually uh, running it. So we can do add endpoint, endpoint, hello endpoint. Uh, we can specify the port on which we want to uh, listen and start and wait. So we bind the socket of the server and we wait uh, forever, essentially. Let's try running the code. We invoke Scala CLI. No exceptions. We didn't add any logging backend, uh, but that should be fine. So now let's try running a couple of requests to test our solution. So first, uh, let's invoke it with the um, proper request. We got a hello Alice. If we say, if we change the name to John, we get a hello John. If we forget the name parameter, um, we get an error value saying that um, the query parameter name is missing. Tapir can generate such detailed error messages because it has the full information of what is the desired shape of the endpoint, right? We specified that we want to have a query name parameter and we didn't provide it. And um, that is it for a start. We have developed, we have described a simple hello world endpoint. We have defined the server logic for that endpoint and we have exposed the endpoint to the outside world. In the next video, we will generate some documentation for our endpoint and expose that, doc that the documentation using the Swagger UI. If you would like to learn more about Tapir in the meantime, 
please take a look at the documentation website. I will also include all the relevant links in the video's description. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you next time. Thank you.